and the scripture reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 to 17, and the word of God says, Be very careful, then, how you live, not as as wise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. May God bless the reading of his word. When I was in school, we made our own clocks with a paper plate. We cut out paper to make the hands of the clock, one longer than the other, and colored them in black. We attached them to the paper plate and wrote numbers 1 through 12, nicely spaced. The teacher set a time, and we moved the little hands around, telling the time. The teacher walked around in the classroom, checked the clocks, and embarrassed those who couldn't tell time. When I got a little longer, I realized how easy it is to tell time. But the hardest thing is to learn what is this time for? Is this a time to speak or to be quiet? It is a time to stand or to sit? It is a time for action or for waiting? The writer of Ecclesiastes knew about this question a long time ago, reminding us how important it is to learn what is this time for. He says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, a time to harvest. A time to turn down, a time to build, and so on. The point is, there is a time for everything. However, let's be careful how we read that. We may think the scripture says we have time to do everything. I don't think so. We have limited time. We have seven days in a week, 24 hours in each day. During that time, we cannot do everything. We must choose what to do. Something to remember about time is that we cannot control time as we wish. We cannot speed it up. We cannot slow it down. We cannot make it stop. We cannot say to time, I am really enjoying this, slow down. Or, I am really hating this, speed up. Actually, it works the opposite. If we are having a great time, time goes by quickly. We cannot control it. What we can control is our lives. I can manage myself. You can manage yourself. We can set our priorities, the things that are important for us. Then, we can do what the Apostle Paul says in today's scripture. Live wisely, making the most of every opportunity and understanding the will of God. In the same way, there are seasons in nature. There are seasons in our lives. However, the seasons in our lives don't necessarily line up with the seasons in the calendar or go along with our age. You can be an elderly person living a springtime or a young person living a winter time in your life. Our seasons are defined by the events we are living and our reactions to them. There is spring. Spring is the starting of new things, the planting of the seeds. There is a lot of excitement in the spring, but there is a lot of hard work as well. We have to break the, the ground. We have to plant the seeds, water them, and prepare everything for the coming harvest. 
Is this the season you are living in now? Are you starting something new in your life? A new relationship, a new job, a new way to live? Summer? Summer is when we take care of the little plants. The days are long, hot, and hard in summer. We spend a lot of time making sure the weeds are not killing our plants and they have water and fertilizer. There is a lot of work to make sure the new thing is happening. Are you in a summertime working hard on something? Working hard to keep a promise? Then comes fall. Fall is the harvest. Projects come to an end in fall, and we celebrate everything God has given to us. It is when we reach our goals. It is not a time of starting new. It is a time to prepare for things to come to an end. No matter your age, you may be enjoying the results of hard work. You may be enjoying being a parent or being retired, or being a new professional. What are you harvesting in your life now? Winter, very important things happen in winter. The roots go deep in winter. The soil prepares for spring and nourishes itself. Also, things die in winter. That's difficult for us. It is difficult to realize that something that has been part of us can no longer be part of our future. However, we need time to let things go. Painful experiences. We don't need to carry that burden anymore. Other times, we need to let go of good things, great things, wonderful experiences, that made us stronger and very happy. But it is necessary to let them go so we can do new things that work now. For we change. We are different than before. We have different priorities, different challenges, different needs. When our daughter Elie Maria graduated from high school this year, Jesus and I were very happy celebrating her accomplishment and our success as parents. But at the same time, we were grieving. Our little baby was about to leave home going to college. We wouldn't be able to protect her, to watch over her 24-7. It wasn't easy. We had more than one thing going on in our hearts. However, it was the right time. We may have this mixture of emotions when we lose someone. We, we experience sadness, but also a sense of relief, for we know they are not suffering anymore. Or after receiving news of a complicated illness, Knowing there is a long treatment can bring mixed emotions to us. Fear and gratefulness, like the valley of the shadows of death. We know it is a scary place, but we certainly know the Lord is with us. Each season is a time when God works in our lives. And it is important to know what season we are in so we can live wisely, making the most of every opportunity and understanding the will of God. If we realize what is this time for, we can act and react properly. We can do what is important at every moment and follow the will of God. But how do we follow the will of God? How do we know it? Will I hear a voice coming from a burning bush like Moses? 
will hear a tender voice saying my name like Samuel? Will God be manifested in my sleep? I don't know. Each experience is different. In my case, it was a series of unfortunate events that started, started with a dangerous case coming to my court, followed by defamation and death threats that forced my family and I to escape from Honduras and come to this country. Then, a long story on how we ended up studying at the Christian Theological Seminary in Indianapolis, and four years later, serving as ministers in this church. In my experience, understanding God's will is a long process. Like the, like the birth of a butterfly that starts with a little egg that becomes a caterpillar that eats and eats for days. Then it sleeps in a cocoon for weeks until, with a lot of effort, comes out as a butterfly. Understanding the will of God for me, it is a slow, long, hard, but beautiful process. That's my experience. You may have yours, and it, it may be quite different, but it is real. God's will is manifested in our lives in very clear ways. Think about three things. You feel in your heart God wants you to do right now. Just three things. It may be changing, change something in your life, keep a promise, go back to church, repair a relationship. I don't know. You know it in your heart. Once you do those things, you will be doing God's will, and He will tell you what is next. God is sometimes like a preacher who started at a new church, and he preached the same sermon about forgiveness over and over again for the first six weeks, until the elders called him apart and said, that's a very good sermon, but we need you to move on and preach another one. The, pre the preacher replied, when you decide it is time to forgive one another, I will preach the next one. Now I ask you, what is this time in your life for? Do you know what God wants you to do at this moment? Are you living wisely? making the most of every opportunity and understanding the will of God? Let us pray. Wonderful Lord, give us wisdom. Wisdom to learn what you want us to do at this time. Give us a grateful heart to be able to give you thanks for everything and at all times. Give us a humble heart so we can follow your will and please you in the way we live. As we celebrate your table this morning, let this communion be a reminder on how you followed the will of God and how we are called to follow your example. Bless this cup and bread as you did that night with your disciples. And bless us who will receive it. In your holy name we pray. Amen.